Ooh, injuries. Okay, well, what is the question? What is it? Like if you have um, a knee injury. Okay. Are there certain things to couple. stay away from or? Yeah, and so for each individual, it's gonna be very specific, right? Depending on what your knee injury is. So I have both my ACLs completely torn. I don't have an ACL in either knee. I tore both my ACLs when I was a, a purple belt in a competition. My first day as a purple belt, I competed, won my division, entered the open division, blew out both my knees in uh, my first match. So um, I don't have an ACL. Uh, I've learned to train around it. I know what angles and positions my legs can be in and what angles and positions they, they can't be in. I've also did, after I blew out both my knees, I, I had to stop doing jiu-jitsu, I couldn't walk. Um, and so I did a year of rehab where I was just focusing on strengthening my legs and strengthening everything around my legs to be able to even walk again without limping and then eventually I, I started training after about a year. Um, but So depending on where you are in your stage of injury, if you're able to work around it and if you have training partners. Um, there's a lot of things that I do too, especially like if I'm injured. So I'll give you an example. Um, Robert, if you sit down in front of me, let's just sit down and give me your back, right? So my knees are injured. All I want you to do, Robert, you're just gonna defend. You're, I just want you to stay here, defend, keep your hands up, right? And it's just hand fighting. So, oh, I'm gonna try to go for his neck. Let me see if I can get a rear naked choke around him. Let me see if I can get a rear. So just playing with hand fighting, right? And just saying, oh, okay, good, that's it. And then we'll go again, right? So he's gonna be here, he's gonna put his hands up for defense. And let me see, oh, let me see if I can, oh, oh. <laughs> let me see if I can, oh, great, okay. So I'm not using my legs, right? So if, if my legs are injured and I still wanna develop myself, how can I still develop myself? How can I still train? How can I still get good at jiu-jitsu? Well, let me figure out what I can do, right? And oh, okay, well this, we know hand fighting and this little position is really important, right? If I get on someone's back, I need to be able to finish. Let me see if I can, ah, try to finish. Oh, great, he pulled, my, grabbed my lip, arm. I gotta take my arms away, right? Ah, that doesn't work. Okay, let me see how I can, oh, boom, ah. Mm. Right? So now I'm just learning to use my hands. If my shoulders are injured, which has happened before, sometimes what all I do is open guard. I've trained, so I'm just playing open guard, and you know, so maybe uh, you're passing my guard, Robert. Oh man, you know, and there's times where I even hurt to move my arm. Put my hand in my belt. Oh, okay, now I gotta learn to use my legs, right? So, oh no, now I'm, and he's not going 100%, right? But, because if he's going 100%, and I'm not using my, I don't have my arms available, I'm gonna lose. But he's just giving me enough pressure and enough resistance so that I can get some good training in, right? Yeah. And eventually I'll get better and better and better. So, that's always a huge thing is, because injuries happen, right? If you think about it, we're training in, in art, that is designed to prepare us for combat. So there has to be a certain amount of toughness to it, to the training, to simulate a real fight. If I don't, if we go nowhere even close to a real fight, I get in a real fight, I'm like, oh my God, this has never happened to me before. Oh my, I've never felt. You're not gonna be prepared, right? So we wanna bring it close, the training has to be, in, and with that level of intensity and, and toughness in the training, yeah, injuries happen, why we're trying to bend each other's joints. I mean, the whole art is us trying to bend each other's joints in ways they're not supposed to bend, <laughs> right? It's kind of crazy. People think, oh my God, you do that, you're crazy. Well, you know, it's, it's fun, right? But it's also important that we know how to defend ourselves. So, yeah, the injuries will happen. And so for us, and especially like for me, myself speaking, just for myself, like Jiu Jitsu has always been therapy for me. Like I come and I train and it, after I leave jujitsu, I always feel so much better. So it's so important for us in our life that even when I'm injured, and I get depressed when I can't train. I get depressed when I, you know, um, when I can't do, because I, I love it so much, it's such a big part of my life. So I have to figure out how can I still train? How can I still get something out of it? 
if I can't use my knee, if I can't use my foot, you know, I've had it where my ankle is twisted and how I can't walk, well, I'm just gonna play on my back and just do, so yeah, there's definitely ways to work around it. And it's important too, because a lot of times when you train with handicaps, you'll get better, so much better. So Hickson used to do this all the time where he would, not even being injured, he would tie both of his hands in his belt and say, hey, okay, you try to pass my guard. He lined up, I wasn't there the day, but my buddy Chris Saunders was there. You know, you know. Um, it was Hegan Machado, Hoyler, Hoyce, uh, Jean-Jacques, and two other black belts, and then Chris was, I think, a purple belt or a brown belt. And nobody could pass his guard without getting submitted. So, you know, training with handicaps can help you dramatically, right? So, yeah, that's a great question because that's, all of us go through that, right? Where, oh man, I'm injured here, I'm injured there, and I'm not gonna go to class. Well, just go to class anyways and see what you can do. Go to class anyways and just watch. Sometimes watching, I've, I've had time where I was training so much and I was banged up and beat up and I said, I just need to take a couple weeks off. Um, and I took a couple weeks off and when I came back, I was actually better than I was before. I felt better, my body had time to recover. The other thing that's cool about coming to class and watching, even though you can't train is, if you think about it, a lot of times when you're doing the class, right, the instructor will teach a technique and then you go train with your partner, hey, let's do this. And then while you're training with your partner, the instructor's going around and say, oh, hey, look, you've put your hand there, do this. So he's did that, told that pointer to that partner. And then, oh, this guy's like, oh man, for some reason I'm not able to get it. Oh, you can't get it because of the guy's doing this, change this. So when I'm training with him, I don't see all this, what's going on. But the guy here sitting watching class, oh, that's a detail that, oh, and there's another detail that helps. Oh, and that's another detail that helps. So the person watching gets to see all these pointers, right? And that's why I always tell people, look, even if you can't train, go to class. Go to class, keep up with the routine, keep showing up to class, and keep learning. Because a lot of times, just going and showing up and watching the class, you'll learn more than sometimes even participating in it.